there, this is Jess from Make and Do Crew, and I've partnered with Lion Brand to show you how to crochet the Up North cardigan. This is a really easy pattern, so even if you've never crocheted a garment before, this is a great one to try. The fronts of the sweater and the back are all worked in one continuous piece, so there's no seaming to do for that section. And then we'll add some sleeves, a simple collar, and some pockets. And the only skills that you're gonna need are half double crochet and a little bit of working in the round, both of which I will show you in this video. For this easy sweater, we're gonna be using Lion Brand's Comfy Cotton Blend, and this is a category three DK weight yarn that is 50% cotton and 50% polyester. And that means that your finished sweater will have this gorgeous drape and a little bit of weight that you're maybe not used to in a typical acrylic yarn. It fits and feels beautiful. You'll also need a size K crochet hook or whatever size you need to achieve the gauge in the pattern. And lastly, you're gonna to wanna to have access to the free written pattern, which you can find on my blog, makeanddocrew.com, by searching Up North Cardigan, and I'll also link it right below this video. That pattern is written in sizes small through 3XL, so that'll give you the specific stitch counts that you need to make the size that you want, as well as the amount of yarn that you'll need for your specific size. We're gonna be working this sweater from the bottom up, and we're gonna start with a really long, foundation row and that's going to serve as the fronts of the sweater and the back and it's all going to be connected and worked in one piece. So to do that I'm going to show you two different options of how to start your foundation row. The first one is the preferable way and that's using foundation half double crochet stitches but I want this pattern to really be accessible even to beginners so if this part is intimidating to you stay tuned for the second option which is very easy and exactly how you would start any other crochet project. So in the pattern, this is listed as the recommended option for the foundation row. And this is a way that we can start our row with a chain and a half double crochet row all worked together. And that means that we don't have to half double crochet in each one of these chains, which just is a little less tedious in the end. So to start foundation half double crochets, we are going to chain two and then we're gonna yarn over as if we're half double crocheting and insert our hook back into the first chain. And I'm going under both bars of that chain. So then I'm going to yarn over and pull my yarn through. This is all like a half double crochet so far, but now we need to work our chain. So to do that, I'm going to pull one loop through, there's my chain, and now we're ready to finish off our half double crochet. So now I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all three loops on my hook. And we've worked one foundation half double crochet stitch here. So let's try that again. We're going to yarn over and again, work back into the last chain. So that's the second one here. I'm working under both of those loops. And I'm gonna yarn over. Now I've got three loops on my hook. Now it's time for me to first work my chain. So I chained one and I'm gonna yarn over again and pull through all three and that's gonna complete my half double crochet. So what we're essentially doing here is working this bottom chain row as well as the half double crochets on top of it all at one time. And that's what eliminates the need to work into each chain as we go. So let's try that again. I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook under the bottom of my work here. This is the bottom side. Under those two bars of the chain, yarn over and pull it through. So now I have three loops, then I'm gonna do my chain one. Now I have three loops again. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all three. And that completes the half double crochet. So I'm gonna yarn over, go through the two loops of my bottom chain here. Pull my yarn through. Now we've got three loops. Then I'm gonna chain one. And then I'm gonna complete the half double crochet. So when we do this, the way we count them is just like regular stitches. In this pattern, the beginning chain two is never gonna count as a stitch in the entire pattern. So we're not counting that, but we have one, two, three, four here. And that's how you're gonna count them. So as I said before, you can reference the free written pattern, which is linked below, and that's gonna show you exactly how many stitches you need to start your cardigan. But I'm gonna show you this a couple more times, and then you can cruise along on a very long strip of this until you have the right number of stitches. So I'm gonna start by yarning over, then insert my hook in the bottom of that chain under two loops here, yarn over again. Now I have three loops on my hook, 
do my chain one. I'm back to three loops, yarn over and pull through all three. So that's all there is to a foundation half double crochet. And as I said, you're gonna to wanna to work the same number of stitches that are listed in the written pattern. If that felt at all confusing, feel free to go back in the video and rewatch it again. This is a stitch that took me a really long time to learn, honestly. And now we're going to tear this out and I'm gonna show you how to do the chain version, which is just a simple chain at the bottom and then half double crocheting in each stitch across. And that's listed in the written pattern as the foundation row uh, option number two. So for the even simpler version of this, what we're going to do is chain a really long strip of chains. Again, you're going to look at the free written pattern to know exactly how many you need. And that number is going to be a little different than if you did the um, foundation half double crochet, just because of how this works. But you'll end up with the same number of stitches at the end. So once you have a long chain, yours is going to be a much longer than that we are going to work back in the opposite direction. And I'm going to skip the first two chains. As I mentioned before, those are never gonna count as our first half double crochet. So then I yarn over, I'm gonna insert my hook in the chain, yarn over again, and then pull through all three loops on my hook. And that makes my first half double crochet. So again, I'm gonna yarn over, work into the next chain, yarn over and pull it through. So now I have three loops, and then pull through all three. So that's just a basic half double crochet. And if you're working this option, you're gonna work back in the direction uh, that we're going here and you're gonna work in every single chain with one half double crochet until you get to the end of the row. And then it's always a good idea just to double check, count your stitches to make sure you have the right number. And you should have, it's listed in the written pattern, but you should have the same number as if you had done the foundation half double crochet option because we're all gonna start our sweaters with the correct number of total stitches uh, essentially after row one. So this is counting as your foundation row. And now it's starting to look a lot like the option of the foundation half double crochet. We're just doing it in two steps, first a chain and then these half double crochets. So go ahead and pick whichever foundation row option works the best for you. And then we'll meet back here once we have this foundation row completed. And once you've finished, you should have a very long row, much longer than this, that looks like a row of half double crochet. So however you started, you're gonna end up with a row that looks like this. And now we're all ready to move on to row two in the written pattern. So row two is gonna be the same for everyone, no matter how you worked row one. And it's gonna be typical half double crochet that we're all used to. So to begin, we're going to chain two at the beginning of the row. As I've mentioned now, that never counts as a stitch. So as you're counting, um, that won't be a first stitch. And then we are going to half double crochet in each one of these stitches all the way across your super long row. So that's my first one. I'm yarning over, inserting my hook in the top two loops, yarning over again, and then pulling my yarn through. That's what a half double crochet looks like and it's a really nice flexible stitch that is pretty quick to work and it creates this nice um, slightly ridged fabric. So we're going to work all the way across our long row in half double crochet stitches and I will meet you at the end of the row to make sure we all know how that should look. So sometimes it can be a little confusing to know where to work your last stitch in a, in a row of half double crochet. So I'm just gonna show you real quick here. This chain two here is at the beginning of that first row, so that doesn't count as a stitch, but there is a stitch right up here that we wanna work into. It's looking, um, it's those brown strands of yarn right here. So if I stopped here, you can see I would eventually make a triangle because I'm not actually working to the end of the row. So I'm going to yarn over work under. These can sometimes be a little bit smushed. Every once in a while I have to pull them out a bit with my fingers. Um, so I'm going to work under those two strands of brown yarn. That's my last half double crochet to work into and then complete it like that. And you can see that looks like I've actually worked to the end of the row. So that's how we work row two and the rest of the rows for a while. So go ahead and check out the free written pattern because that will tell you the exact number of rows that you need to work for your size, but you're just gonna work in your very long strip, much longer than mine. You're gonna work just back and forth in half double crochet until you have the correct number of rows. And once you finish those rows, we're going to meet back here and talk about decreasing a little bit. It's not scary at all, but it will give our cardigan a nice tapered look as it comes into the bust and shoulder area. 
So once you've worked even for a long time, we're gonna place some stitch markers in the middle of our row in two spots, and that's gonna show us where we're gonna decrease. And we're gonna decrease every other row for a while to sort of bring our rectangle in a little bit and make it a bit more narrow at the top of the sweater so that the bottom can flare out a bit. So I have these placed here with 40 stitches over here and then I have my stitch marker placed in the 41st stitch from this side and that's just for my size. So this is something you're gonna to wanna to consult the written pattern on to know how many stitches should be there for your size. But then there's 40 over here and again this is in the 41st stitch from that edge. And these stitch markers are gonna show us where we decrease. All the decreases are gonna take place in between the stitch markers. So this everything that's on the outside of the stitch marker is gonna be worked normally, and then the decreases will happen right inside the stitch markers. So let's go ahead and work a decrease row so we can learn how to do them. So we're gonna begin our row just like any other row where we chain two, and then we have to double crochet in every single stitch until we get to the stitch marker. And then once we approach the stitch marker here, I've worked in every stitch until the marked stitch, and I'm gonna take out my stitch marker, and then I'm going to do a half double crochet decrease right here in these two stitches. So it's the marked stitch and the one after it. So this is the center of our rectangle, and we're working our decrease toward the center. So I'm going to yarn over, and then yarn over again, pull my yarn up, so I have three loops on my hook, then I'm gonna yarn over again to start the second half double crochet. Go underneath there, yarn over again, and pull up another one. So now I have five loops on my hook, and then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all five. So what we've done there is take two stitches and turn them into one stitch, and we've eliminated one stitch right here. So we're gonna place our stitch marker right back in the top of that stitch we just created. So now we're just gonna do normal half double crochets until we get to a couple stitches before the next stitch marker. So now we're gonna decrease over those two stitches, the next stitch and the marked stitch. And to do that, I'm going to yarn over, grab my loop, just like I'm gonna do a normal half double crochet, but instead of completing it, I'm gonna yarn over again, insert my hook and yarn over again to create five loops on my hook. And then I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all five whoops, to create one stitch out of two. And then I'm gonna place my stitch marker in the top of that stitch. And now we can just work normal half double crochet stitches all the way to the end of this row. And these decreases are gonna happen on every other row for a little while. So what you're gonna do is work back in the opposite direction and when you come to this stitch, just work a normal half double crochet and place your stitch marker in the top of it. So that then when you work your next uh, decrease row, heading back in this direction, you'll know exactly where to do your decreases. And we'll do it just like we did in this row here. So go ahead and check the free written pattern to know how many decrease rows you need to do. And again, those will alternate by rows where you don't decrease at all. And after we complete those, we're gonna start separating our rectangle to make two fronts of the cardigan and the back. Now, once you've worked all your decrease rows, we're gonna move on to the next section of the pattern, which is where we're gonna divide for the fronts, the back, and then leaving the armholes open. So to do this, I've placed stitch markers in strategic places here, and this is indicating the opening for the armhole. So the front is over here, and then here's the back, here's another armhole, and another part of the front here. So again, you can look at the free written pattern, and there's a diagram showing exactly which stitch you put these in per size. But because our yarn is still attached over here from our last row, we're just gonna work this front first so we don't have to cut our yarn. So we're gonna essentially work this section right here back and forth in rows, going like this, and we're gonna work from here all the way at stop at the stitch before the marker. So these markers indicate the stitches that won't be worked. So never work the marked stitch on either side or the stitches in between. But you're gonna go ahead and crochet from here in half double crochet, just like we have been, ending right here at this stitch marker, uh, the stitch before it, and then you're gonna work back in the opposite direction in half double crochet again, and you're just gonna work back and forth like that for a lot of rows vertically, and you can check out the free written pattern to know exactly how many for your size. And then we'll meet back here and we'll attach the yarn for the back. 
Okay, so once we've finished up our first front, we can fasten off our yarn and then we're ready to reattach it here for the back. So I've got my two stitch markers that are indicating where the armholes are, one here and one here. And we're gonna reattach our yarn and work between these stitch markers to make our back. So to start that, we need the wrong side of our fabric facing up. And the way we can tell what the wrong side is, is to just look at this top row. And you're gonna wanna be working in the direction you normally would going against this row. So if this looks like the last row you worked this way, then you know you're gonna work this one back this way. So I'm gonna attach my yarn right over here because this is my wrong side. So I have a slip knot here on my hook and I'm just gonna insert my hook in the stitch that's right inside the stitch marker. So we're doing everything in between the stitch markers, both for the front and the back. So I'm gonna put my hook in this first stitch within the back section here, and I'm going to just yarn over and pull the yarn through. And then I can just pull the um, slip knot down and chain two, and then my yarn is attached. So we're gonna do a half double crochet in that same stitch we just attached our yarn in. So I'm gonna half double crochet one in that stitch. That's our first stitch of the back. And then I'm gonna work half double crochets all the way across, stopping one stitch short of the marker here. So the last stitch that isn't marked over here on this side. And now we're approaching the end of this first back row here. So here's my marked stitch and I'm gonna work the last stitch right before that marker with a half double crochet. And then that's gonna be the end of my back. So I'm going to chain two, and then I'll just flip this around. And I'm gonna work back in the opposite direction with half double crochets in each stitch. And we're just gonna work between those two markers now. So that section will leave the armholes open and you should end up with the same number of stitches in each row. So just like with the front, um, you can check the free written pattern to know exactly how many stitches should be there. Um, it's based on where you put those markers before. But we're gonna work the same number of rows as we did for the front so that they end up the same height. And once we've completed our back, we're gonna move on to the second front piece. And to do that, we're gonna attach our yarn just like we did for the back. So here's my stitch marker that indicates the beginning of the front section. And I attached my yarn in that stitch that's right inside that. So on the other side of the stitch marker from the armhole. And in that first stitch, I chained two, and then I half double crocheted in that stitch, and then in every stitch across. And this should have the same number of stitches as your other front did. The same number across, and you're gonna work the same number of rows you have for the other front and the back. So once you've completed your back and your second front, we're gonna be ready to move on to the sleeves. For the sleeves, you're obviously gonna to wanna to make two of them. And for the total number of chains that you need to start at the bottom of the wrist, that's listed in the free written pattern. So check that out. I'm starting here with 30 and I've chained these. Now I'm going to slip stitch to join them. So I'm making sure that this is not twisted at all. And then I'm going to pull it together like this and work back into the very first chain pull my yarn through and then pull it through the chain that's on my hook. So that's my slip stitch. As we're working this part of the pattern, the slip stitch never counts as a stitch. So that's just more of like a connector. So from here, we're going to chain two and then half double crochet in each of these chains all the way around. And as we're coming upon the end of this first round here, I'm gonna work my last half double crochet in the last chain. So I wanna show you where that slip stitch is that I was mentioning that will always skip. It's right here and it looks a bit tight because I fastened it down pretty um, snugly, but that is not something that we're gonna work in. And if you're ever confused, you can just count the total number of half double crochets you have and it should be um, the same number as you have listed in the pattern. And that can help you know if that is indeed a stitch or not. But once you get the hang of it, I think you'll know always to not work into that stitch. And typically when you work in the round, you would slip stitch to the very first stitch and then continue working in the same direction. 
but in this pattern we're going to be working in turned rounds so that our half double crochet rows can look the same as they did in the main body of the sweater. So I'm inserting my hook in my first half double crochet of this round. So it's kind of like I'm skipping for past those first two turning chains we started with and then working my hook underneath the first V shape, which is our first stitch of this round. And I'm just gonna work a slip stitch. So I've yarned over and I'm pulling it through the loop that's on my hook. So that is my new slip stitch that I will again skip as I work at the end of this next round. But I'm gonna show you for round two, Instead of continuing in the same direction, we're going to turn our work. So it's the only thing different that we're doing here than normal working in the round. So after I turn it, I'm going to just work back in the opposite direction, half double crocheting in each stitch along the way, all the way to the end of the round. And as we're coming to the end of this second round here, I just want to show you once again where we're working our last stitch. For me, it's brown right here. That's my last stitch. So I'm half double crocheting there, and then I am slip stitching into my first stitch from the beginning of the round. So I'm working in there with a slip stitch. And like I said, if you're at all confused, like did I work every stitch, did I add one on accident, just go back and count the total number of stitches and it should be the same number you had in round one. So from here, all sizes are gonna work two more rounds just like this. So we just finished with a wrong side round because we kind of had the inside of the sleeve facing us as we worked. So now we're going to turn it. Again, we're gonna chain two, just like we always do, and then turn our work. This is gonna be called a right side round, and this is listed in the pattern as well because we have the right side, the outside of the sweater sleeve facing us. So I'm gonna work a half double crochet in each one of these stitches all the way around, and that will complete round three. And then we'll turn back in the opposite direction and work round four in the opposite direction. And then we can all meet back here for round five where we're gonna learn how to do a very simple increase. So as we complete round four here, I'm going to slip stitch to join it. And then we should all be on a right side round, which is round five. And this is where we're gonna begin our increasing. So we're gonna turn our work and chain two, or chain two and turn our work, however you like to do it. And then we're going to increase in the first and the last half double crochets of the round. So our increase rounds are always going to increase right in this little seam. It doesn't really look like a seam, but it's where we're joining, in this seam section right here. So to do that, I'm just simply going to work two half double crochets into the same stitch. So what that looks like is I work my first half double crochet like that, and then instead of moving on to the next stitch, I'm going to yarn over and half double crochet again in the same stitch. So we've just increased by one. And now we're gonna work in every half double crochet, just one stitch like we have been, and when we get to the end of the round, we're gonna do the same thing that we did to start the round. And at the end of the round here, we've got one last stitch to work in, so we're gonna place two half double crochets in there. One and two. So we've increased on this round by a total of two stitches, one at the beginning and one at the end. So we're gonna finish this round just like we finish all of our other rounds where we slip stitch into our first half double crochet. And now you've just learned all the skills that you need to work the next big chunk of the sleeve. So what we're gonna be doing is repeating rounds two through five. So two, three, and four were all just regular back and forth rounds with no increasing. And then round five is the one where we increase by two stitches. And we're just gonna repeat those same four rows with an increase every four rows for several times. And the total number of times that you need to increase is listed in the written pattern. So go ahead and check that out and you're gonna work those chunks of four rows a bunch of times until you're finished increasing and then we will talk about what to do to finish off the sleeve. So once you've completed all the sleeve increases listed in the pattern, you should have what looks sort of like a tapered tube. It's narrower down here, a little wider up here, and there is gonna be a little section at the end that we're gonna work in rows instead of rounds. So in the pattern, this is gonna be the part where we transition from rounds to just working in rows. And what that's gonna do is leave a little space open right here to seam the sleeve into the armpit of the sweater. 
So I've just completed a round right here and it was being worked uh, that direction. So I've turned it just like we have been. So I'm gonna chain two here, just like we always do. And then I'm gonna work a half double crochet in each half double crochet stitch all the way around. This is the same as we've been doing and the only difference is gonna be at the end of the row. So let's work around the sleeve and I'll meet you back at the end of the row to talk about what to do next. So now we're coming upon the end of the round and it's hard to see, but I have two more stitches left to work in the round. So I'm going to do half double crochets there. And then this is when we would typically slip stitch right here into that, um, those first turning chain of the round. That's what we've been doing all along in the sleeve. But now, instead of slip stitching, we are just going to turn our work and do a chain two to start the next row. So what that's gonna do is leave this open V space and that's gonna be what we seam into the armpit. So I'm gonna turn this around just like we have been, we're still working uh, back and forth. It's just not joined. So after I've chained two, I'm going to half double crochet in the next stitch and do that all the way around back to the beginning of the previous row. And then as I get back to the beginning of that previous row right here, I'm gonna work my last stitch in the last half double crochet and that's just like we did you know in all the rows of the sweater this is no different now so we're forming that v and so we're just going to work back and forth like that no more of our rounds are going to be slip stitched to join they're going to be worked separately like this to continue forming this v once you've finished your sleeves, you're ready to move on to part two of this video tutorial, where we're gonna cover how to work your collar, how to make pockets, and then how to join everything together. I'll see you there.